So we are finally back with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 6, Episode 7, Grapes of a Wrath. This episode wasn't that good, to be honest. It was kind of a filler episode, at least in my opinion. I didn't like it that much. Um, basically, it started off with Carly Rae and Sierra meeting at the Glam Shop. And Sierra, I didn't know that they was that close. I remember them having that double date, but I didn't think nothing of it, really. They had that double... Oh, Basically, Sierra told Carly what was going on with the whole affair thing, and it was Mariah. She couldn't believe it. I really felt bad for her, because she really, you can tell that her and Mariah were real friends, even though I was her assistant. She said, I, I talk to this girl every day. I thought she was my sister, this, that, and the other. I hope this ain't just for storyline, because this, this made me, because y'all know I don't like new people. So, Sierra, I could do without. Mariah, I could do without. But it really made me, like... It made me kind of like Sierra. Even though y'all know when I, when they first got introduced, I said Mariah was like the best looking girl on the whole cast. Um, Mariah, uh, Sierra not bad looking. She she's good looking. She's she she looked like she would be a good wife. But anyway, I feel bad for Sierra and that scene. Then we go to Waka and Charlie, who is Tammy's daughter. She's an 11 year old girl, and Waka been in her life since she was five years old. So that's for six years. And Waka is convinced that that's his daughter. <clears throat> and I think she even calls Waka dad. So, that's real nice. Um, basically, they were skating. It's nice that Tammy still let Charlie, the daughter, and Waka be together. It was a nice little scene. It was real funny seeing Waka Flocka skating with little with the little girl. Because, like, Waka is like a hood gangster rapper. And, like, he go hard in the paint. And then you see this other side of him where he's just being a good dad, father. Falling all over. He can't skate. She can. And that, them talking was a really good scene. You know, it was funny. The little girl is cute. She funny. She'll get a little kid. Um, basically, he's like, I need your help. She's like, he's like, what can I do to get us back together? You want me back now? So Charlie's like, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. He was like, um, so what should I do for her? Should I? No, I think she said. Take her to a restaurant in Paris. And he's like, we already did that. Or something like that. Take her to Paris. And she, he's like, we already did that. And then she's like, well, you didn't take me. So, you know, she was cute. That was hilarious. Seeing them do that. And then she's like, or Waka's like, Can I, should I buy her some shoes and bags? Take her to a restaurant. It was a lot. Basically, he's just trying to get back with Tammy. I think he's doing it kind of the wrong way, going at it with the little girl. Oh, he did tell her, okay, from now on, you have to, since you want me in the house, you got to keep convincing mom, action about me. And in my opinion, he shouldn't have to tell her that. You know, it, her, she should be the one already, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like she only doing it because he told her to, but I know that their relationship is close. And I like Waka Flocka, so, you know. I hope, well, I think him and Tammy are together, so. But, <clears throat> then we go to a Tommy scene with, she's in the wine, winery or whatever, with her little guy, with her guy. I don't know who he, what he, like, he's a wine expert or something like that. And she's created this wine, and they're talking about it, drinking it, sipping it. KK walks in. KK is against this. She doesn't think that Tommy should do this. She's all like... Would a crackhead sell crack? No, you can't be a drunk and sell alcohol. And the saying got pretty intense because Tommy's trying to convince KK that she's not an alcoholic. She came off as an alcoholic while she was saying all this. Because only an alcoholic would get this worked up and so mad about it in my head, you know. KK says, this can get you far, but you can't be your best... You can't be the one drinking it the most, basically. And basically... um. Tommy doesn't like that KK thinks she's an alcoholic. She's like, I'm not. I don't drink every day. And KK's like, since when? KK's convinced that Tommy's an alcoholic. And based on us watching the show, we would think she was too. Um, Tommy also says... Uh, Tommy was basically going against everything that KK said. But at some point, I think she's, um, Tommy said... I don't get drunk or something like that. And KK was like, I didn't say you got drunk. I said you drink every day or something like that. But basically that was it with that. Um, Tommy invites KK to a wine tasting. Then we see Waka meeting up with Deb. This scene was, you know, it was whatever. You know, it was just 
Walker meet up with his mom. They talked about Tammy, the Tammy situation, the Charlie situation, and um, Deb is like, um, don't, you're not bringing no other girl to me, so you better get back with her. You're losing your daughter over this, all that, this, that, and the other. And you can't just come into the house, because he told her about when he went to the house. Deb's like, you can't just go into the house with some bags and think she go welcome you back in with open arms and say, come on, let's get in the bed and roll around. I agree with Deb. Then we see Stevie J leaving the courthouse. Um, basically, he talked about how it was ugly in there. I really wish we could see what happened in there because the way they was explaining it was ugly. And he kind of regrets. You kind of can tell that he regrets what he did, filing papers and stuff. But he wants to get over that. Then uh, she said, they, I mean, no, Stevie apparently inside court in the papers, he wanted full custody. And he wanted her to take a drug test because he claimed that she was an addict. And all this, that, and the other. Jocelyn is basically, she didn't seem as sad as Stevie. Stevie seemed sad. She seemed like whatever. Talking to her lawyer. And she's saying like, I can't believe he really did that. I can't believe, like all he had to do, Jocelyn came off the smart one in this situation. Because she was like, all he had to do was withdraw all the claims and accusations that he you know put in the following the papers because they've been on good terms and so they was on good terms and then Stevie did all that so it was really Stevie's fault Jocelyn said now she don't want the baby near Stevie at all she want full custody and to go to Miami I think that's doing too much Jocelyn way way too much you don't want the baby around him at all that's her dad Oh, and Johnson made another good point. She said, how are you going to try to get full custody or soul custody, whatever it's called, on a baby that you don't even know is yours? Let you tell it. But Johnson is convinced that that's hers. Um, uh, oh, and then Johnson says, so Stevie finally took the test to see if the baby is his. And she, she's telling the Lord, what if he lied? What if he lied? Or if he lied and got somebody else to take the test, this and the other. And I'm thinking Jocelyn is nervous. I think that she was 90% sure that the baby was Stevie's. But 10% of her was like, it might not be for real. So, I think that's what was going through Jocelyn's mind at that point. Because she's saying, what if it's a lie? What if it's a lie? If you know it's his, you know it's his. You wouldn't even think that. Um. Then we see Jock performing. Okay, and he gets done performing. He goes sit with Tommy and Dime, who were there, cause you know they've been friends lately. Um, basically they talk with Jock. They talk about Carly first, you know the situation. Dime is friends with Carly, which I like their friendship. Dime wants Tommy and Jock to admit to Carly what's going on with them, and basically Jock is Jock is saying that they're not a committed relationship, so it don't matter. He's been saying that. Um, Tommy is saying it's none of her business, period. Then they talk about Treasure P. Jock says, you know, this happened, this happened. That girl is irrelevant to me. Jock, that's your intern, so just keep them away from each other. Even though he didn't, he didn't get them together, I guess. But Treasure P, y'all know how I feel about new people, so I don't really care about her at all. Then they talk about the wine. Dime and Jock laugh, basically laugh inside Tommy's face saying, oh, yeah, you doing this winery so you can drink it. And, they, you know, then um, Tommy invites them to a wine tasting. Get that out the way. Then we go to Sierra and Moriah meeting. This was pretty awkward, basically. Um, but you can tell that they did used to be friends. It's weird. I think Sierra was lying, though, when she said, oh, I wasn't going to talk to her, but she started blowing up my phone. I don't want people to say blowing up my phone. I bet you, well, then again, she probably did blow up her phone. But Moriah probably only called, like, twice. I can see if that happened. But maybe she did blow up her phone. Basically, Sierra says, you don't understand what marriage means. I like how Sierra said that. Like, you don't understand what marriage means. This wasn't my boyfriend. This was my husband. And Sierra said, um, I understand what it, or Mariah said, I understand what it means, but he doesn't. She sounds so stupid. I can't believe how, like, I thought she was so attractive and cute and just, she sounds so stupid. And then Sierra put her in her place and said, no, you don't know what marriage means because you wouldn't have did that. Um, yeah, so Team Sierra on, in this situation, 
Um, then Mariah decides to tell Sierra what happened. And this is where I not on Sierra's side anymore. Mariah tells Sierra what happened the night of the something, some launch that Sierra had. And Mariah is Sierra's assistant, so Sierra had every right to tell Mariah to take her husband home because he was drunk. Even though Mariah said she was a little bit lit too, so she shouldn't have been driving either. And then that's when it all happened. Sierra decides to go after Mariah and says, you got the body of a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> that's funny. But anyway, they go at it. Um, the girl, um, Sierra, threw her purse and they were about to fight, but neither one of them looked like they about that. Um, and then Sierra leaves. Uh, I'm not really on Sierra's side because why did you why don't you believe her? She said that happened even though you shouldn't like be friends with her or nothing like that, but you had no right to just flat out blatantly say you don't believe her. That's all I'm saying. Then we go to Tommy scene or Tammy scene, I'm sorry. Um Tammy tells us about the relationship Charlie has with Waka and how she let them, you know, still see each other and they're in a good place. Tammy says that she Waka takes Charlie on dates all the time, and Tammy wants to go talk to Charlie about what happened. Really good scene, you know. Charlie's Charlie is such a, a cute little girl trying to tell convince her mom to get back with dad. So you know, um, Tammy's like, no. Tammy gives a talk to her daughter about you know, don't let a man do this, that, and the other. But Tammy kept saying we're taking a break, so. It's not that big a deal. Walk us, walk us to, to let the break go on. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I've never been married, so. I don't know. Um, she's to, Charlie told Tammy about he wanted to take you to Paris. She's like, been there twice. Um, he wants to buy you a bunch of shoes and bags. She said, I got a closet full of them. So, you know, then the sorry situation. How do I know he's sorry? Charlie says, because he told me. I'm half of you. You half of me. You told me this. So, if I... Forgive him, you should, and there was a bunch of that, so. Good little scene, though, with mom and, you know, daughter. Then we see Jocelyn and Stevie opening up the results. So dramatic, even though we already know what its probability of, a t of whatever it's called, 99.9. .9. Stevie is the father. Um, Jocelyn, oh, this is when Jocelyn told the lawyer about how he don't want, she don't want Stevie around the baby at all. Um, then we go to Tammy. Oh, we see the scene of Tammy, Rashida, and Mimi walking. And I'm like, oh, look at this. Tammy fit in. Tammy just replaced Erica Dixon. Remember, it used to always be um, Mimi, Rashida, and Erica Dixon walking. And now Tammy's there. So, And Aria wasn't there either. I just realized that. But anyway, they walk into Tammy's or Tommy's. Wine tasting. This was the big scene of the episode. You know, we always got the biggest scene of the episode. This was this. Scrappy and Jock are already there. They're surprised to see Rashida there. Uh, Scrappy and Rashida talk. I guess they like, they're friends or whatever. And Scrappy's like, it's nice to see you here. I didn't expect you to be here. Rashida's like, I don't want to talk about none of that. I'm just here to support. And Scrappy says pretty much the same thing. He's just there to support. Um, we see Tommy ask Dime about the wine, and Dime says, I'm not a wine drinker, this is a little strong, and Tommy says 13% alcohol, so, that was whatever. KK arrives, and, um, to be honest, Tommy didn't seem like she was happy to see her. She said, you're my biggest critic, um, KK says she's just there to support. Um, then we see Scrap and Tommy. Wait. Oh, KK gives Scrap. KK gives the phone to Tommy and says, I have a surprise for you. And it was Scrap. Scrap, you know, congratulating Tommy. Tommy's blushing and happy. And she's trying to remain gangster, though. Um, then we see lovely Mimi arrive. And everybody's like, huh? Who? And then Tommy <laughs> introduces lovely Mimi to everybody. Um, Tammy gives, or Tom, I keep getting these names. Tommy gives a thank you speech to everybody, and then Mimi commends Tommy and says, you know, it's so I'm so happy, so proud of you, it's good that you're doing all this and that, and Tammy jumped in and said, you know, yeah, I, I think you have such a soft heart because she started crying, T Tommy did, and Tommy said, thank you, this means a lot coming from you, Mimi, because we're not even friends, I have people that have been in my life for forever and they're not even supporting me. 
throwing shade at KK, which I dislike. I think KK and Tommy should be real good friends. Like, I shouldn't be throwing shade like that. That's that's pretty messed up. And if it wasn't KK, if it was somebody else, by the way, y'all like KK. She just she comes off as such an OG boss gangster to me, but. If it wasn't KK, if she was throwing shade like that at somebody else, they it would have been a fight. So, but anyway, um, then we see lovely Mimi ask Dime in the middle of the table, scripted scene number one. It took us this long to get to the first scripted scene. Lovely Mimi asks, just so happened to say, hey Dime, I haven't seen you since the Jocelyn photo shoot. You mean to tell me you don't watch this show all these seasons, five seasons you haven't seen? That they don't get along with Jocelyn and you just so happen to ask her about this. So then um, Dime's like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Um, Tommy's like, oh, you went to Jocelyn's photo shoot. Dime's like, I did. And Dime tried to explain why. And Tammy cut her off and said, so, hey, did she do your nails? And she said she was trying to change the subject, but it did come off as, you know, throwing them, like, I don't want to talk about this, but I, I get her intentions, but it didn't come off that way. And then all of a sudden, I didn't think nothing of it, and Tammy, or Dime, was inside her confession like, this Miss Piggy, this Miss Piggy bitch, this little dog face bitch, and this hoe, and this, I'm like, who is she talking about? And she was apparently talking about, um, about Tammy. And I, in my head, when she said Miss Piggy, I'm like, that's so funny, because I used to call Dime Miss Piggy because of her shape. She got, you know, she's she's shaped like a pear. She got, she's a shape like, you know, like a Jessica Rabbit or a Betty, Betty Boop or whatever. She got a nice body and she got um pink hair. But Dime looked better than ever this season. This season, Dime looked the best. Just like Rashida. Rashida looked better than ever this season. She looked the best she ever looked. A lot of girls this season looked the best they ever looked this season, so. But anyway, um, Dime tells, um, but in my opinion, Dime do look better than Tammy this season, so, but whatever. Um, Dime tells Tammy to chill out, and Tammy's like, what, what happened? Don't tell me to chill out, and they went at it, they start fighting. Um, Tommy says she... Tammy says she just tried to change the subject. She didn't know all this would happen. She said it's not that serious, which I agree. Dom tells why she doesn't get along with Tammy. It was an Instagram DM where Tammy says she don't think women over 30 should have pink hair or colored hair, which I agree with. If you don't believe me, go check out my other videos. Tap out. In one of my tap outs, I tapped out girls over 30 having colored hair. It's, it's just, I don't think they should have that. Um, Rashida says that she's happy that this drama is happen happening, basically, because it's a distraction from the fact that all the drama was pointed towards her in the beginning, which I'm just like, shaking my hair, Rashida. Don't let any of this distract from the fact that you are staying with your husband even though he has a baby with another girl. And then Dime says that Tammy is a pass around hoe, which I don't... I don't understand why she said that. That made no sense. And Tammy even said it. I've been with my husband for five years. That don't make sense. Dime. And it really shouldn't come from you because you was a stripper. And there's, you know what the rumor is about all strippers, which I disagree with. But, I mean, KK says she knew all this was going to happen because you gave a whole bunch of girls alcohol. Um, <laughs> Scrappy was just sitting there watching the whole thing going back and forth, which I liked that. That was funny. Then Tommy goes after Dime. Oh, wait. I forgot to tell you that they almost started fighting because Tammy got a glass and was about to throw it at Dime. And Dime was like, oh, don't throw no Dime. Don't, don't throw no glass at me. She didn't get to throw the glass because as soon as she went like this, a security grabbed it. Dime's like, no, I, I don't throw glass. I will be, I will be as I am. That's what I do. I, be, I will be as I am. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Dime's so country, but I'm starting to like her. Y'all know I came for Dime the last couple of episodes because I just... Didn't think she belonged here no more. And you know, I don't like new people. And I just, I thought she didn't have a storyline and she was just in everybody else's. She was basically like Carly Rae. But I liked her this episode. I was more on her side than the other girls. Dom leaves. Tommy goes after her. She tries to fight her too. Dom leaves. I really felt bad for her because nobody went out with her. And then Lovely Mimi started talking like, I feel like Lovely Mimi wanted them to go after her next because she kept saying, I'm friends with Jocelyn. I like Jocelyn. And they're like, whatever, Melissa, they, 
talk about Melissa, Mimi is like, oh, Melissa always wants to play different stuff. I'm like, Mimi, you just, I thought you didn't care. You said you did not care about Melissa being friends with Jocelyn. You contradicting yourself, and I hate that. Tommy gives a speech about Dime and just and Jocelyn and all this, that, and the other. I was like, whatever, don't care about that. Um, lovely Mimi keeps trying to talk, bring it back to herself. Um, I didn't know what went on. They're not blaming you. So then Mimi said, but Melissa does. Melissa does. Okay, Melissa not there with Tommy. So why are y'all talking about Melissa now? KK says, oh. Then Tommy throws more shade at KK by saying, I'm glad all y'all are here. Even you, KK. And KK's like, I'm just here to drink. I'm just drinking. This is tasting better than Hennessy right now. Everybody laugh. Um, and then Tommy mom arrives, which I I don't care about, and I'm pretty sure a lot of fans don't care about. I don't know why they thought that would be a good way to end this episode. Like we do not care that her mom came. Like people barely care about Tommy, and now you, her mom. Like first of all, I didn't even know who that was walking in, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people didn't know. But that's what we're gonna pick back up next week. I doubt anybody cares about that. Um, this episode was lacking a lot. Um, it didn't have Stevie or Jocelyn in it a lot, you know, they just had that one little scene. I think Jocelyn had two scenes, Stevie had that one. Um, barely had any Carly Red. at least I don't remember seeing her that much. Um, and, oh, we are missing the whole Kirk, Kirk's family. Um, the three, whatever, Rod and his two girls, we're missing them. If, I'm contradicting myself because I say I don't want to see new people. But, I don't know. But Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, share this video, and uh, I'll see y'all on Wednesday for hashtag WCW.